from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. And good afternoon to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by from his home this midday. Todd, what can we expect as people try to get outside for their lunch hour? You know, it's another quiet day for us here across central Indiana, Lauren. The temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. The sun is shining, albeit, as you'll see in just a second, there's a little bit of haze out there. And as we talked about on Good Morning Indiana, once again, that is the smoke that's coming into central Indiana and the higher levels of the atmosphere from the wildfires out west. 69 right now in Peru, 66 in Columbus, 71 is the current temperature in Indy, and 73 in Bloomington. So even though the skies are mostly sunny, there's that haze that you see here looking for my IMS and that's what's given it. it's the milky look but again there's no threat of any rain in the forecast today and some of the clouds from tropical storm beta down to our south are actually starting to make their way towards our area as well unfortunately that rain is not making it into our area it's going to be another dry forecast for us not only today but really the next couple days unfortunately we really really could use that rainfall Temperatures will continue to climb here this afternoon into the mid to upper 70s across most of the area with partly cloudy skies, but again, more of that hazy look than anything. Coming up, I'll let you know exactly when I think we could see our best rain chances here across central Indiana in your seven-day planning forecast. Lauren? All right, Todd. We want to get to some, some breaking news we're following this midday. Indianapolis Public Schools have canceled classes for the rest of the day today due to the lingering internet outage that they're experiencing across the district. IPS first announced that a two-hour delay would take place this morning because of that same internet outage. Of course, you may remember that all IPS schools are doing entirely virtual learning right now. So we have learned that the outage continues this midday and classes are canceled for this Tuesday. I want to get to some sad news now out of Brown County this midday. The father of a former IU basketball star, Damon Bailey, has died following a motorcycle crash. That crash also sent Bailey's mother to the hospital with serious injuries. The Brown County Sheriff's Office says that Wendell Bailey died in that crash. It happened Monday afternoon along State Road 46, just east of State Road 135. That's near Nashville, Indiana. Investigators say the crash involved other vehicles, including one that was attempting to pass a semi truck, but they have not said how Bailey's motorcycle was involved yet. The condition of Bailey's mother has not been released. Well, it appears that Republicans in the Senate may be able to move forward with efforts to replace late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Today, Indiana Senator Mike Braun added his name to the list of those who believe that the Senate should move quickly to confirm a new justice and not wait and see who wins in November for the presidential race. Now, the Republicans have faced some criticism for reversing the position that they held before the 2016 election when they blocked a vote on President Obama's Supreme Court nominee for months. Today, in a new conference with reporters, Braun said that he supports the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett. She's the federal appeals court judge from right here in Indiana who appears to be the front runner. But Braun also says that he backs all the potential nominees mentioned so far. He believes they won't, quote, legislate from the bench. That is the main criteria when put somebody in the Supreme Court. Are you going to pay attention to the Constitution or are you going to interpret, not legislate? Well, so far, Indiana's other Republican Senator, Todd Young, he hasn't commented yet on holding a Supreme Court vote prior to this year's election. Back in 2016, Young was among those who argued that the winner of the presidential race should have the right to select the next Supreme Court justice and not then-President Obama. And we know numerous reports say that Judge Barrett, the Hoosier appeals, appeals Court judge, visited the White House to meet with President Trump on Monday. The president now says that he'll announce this Saturday whether he'll nominate her or someone else to the Supreme Court seat. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest now from Washington. Before she's even been laid to rest, the race is on to fill the Supreme Court seat left behind by iconic liberal justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The Republican-controlled Senate is ready to vote and confirm President Trump's nominee, and now another senator key to securing that nomination says he's backing his party. What I intend to do is to uh, proceed with the consideration process, and if a, uh, a nominee actually reaches the floor, that I will vote based upon the qualifications of that nominee. Democrats urging their GOP colleagues to delay a confirmation vote until after the election. It's a violation of the spirit of the Constitution to suggest that he should not wait for the outcome of the election. 
Partisan politics on full display as this bitter battle over when to name a replacement divides down party lines. Both Democrats and Republicans flipping their positions on nominating a justice in an election year from just a few years ago. Senator Lindsey Graham said this in 2018 during a forum for The Atlantic magazine. If an opening comes in the last year of President Trump's term and the primary process has started, we'll wait to the next election. And I've got a pretty good chance of being the judiciary. You're on the record. Yeah. All right. Hold the tape. And after wanting President Obama's 2016 SCOTUS pick to be confirmed in an election year, Democrats now say it should wait. We should honor her dying wish imparted to her granddaughter that she, quote, not be replaced until the next president is installed. As for who will fill the seat on the bench Ginsburg leaves behind, President Trump says he will announce his pick on Saturday. I don't want to make the men too angry. It will be a woman. Is that okay? Is that okay? Sources tell ABC News the president says he's considering five candidates. Two federal judges are atop that list. Amy Coney Barrett, who the president met with Monday, is considered the front runner. At least two GOP senators have expressed opposition in voting to confirm a new justice in an election year. But with more Republicans like moderate Mitt Romney siding with their party, it does appear as though Republicans in the Senate do have the votes to confirm a new nominee. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Andrew, thank you. Today is National Voter Registration Day. It's the deadline to register in Indiana is October 5th if you want to vote in this November's election. State and local officials say that absentee voting will be used much more this year than in the past due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They also say if you plan to vote absentee in the general election, it may be a little trickier than when you mailed in your ballot for the June primary. There are conditions that you have to meet to be eligible to vote absentee. We have all of that information for you, plus everything you need to know to get ready for the general election. All you have to do is go to WRTV.com slash vote in 2020. Below the age of 18, like nobody. They have a strong immune system. Who knows? You look at you. Take your hat off to the young because they have a hell of an immune system, but it affects virtually nobody. President Trump now being criticized for making those false claims about who's affected by COVID-19. The comments made at a rally in Ohio last night. And they come this morning as the U.S. reached 200,000 COVID-19 deaths, according to Johns Hopkins University. The president's response to the pandemic is a frequent topic of discussion for his opponent, who wants to replace him in the White House. Now with this crisis, a real crisis, the crisis that required serious presidential leadership, he just wasn't up to it. He froze, he failed to act, he panicked, and America's paid the worst price of any nation in the world. Well, as for COVID-19 and the impact here in Indiana, so far almost 3,300 of those 200,000 deaths have happened in our state related to the coronavirus. Nine additional deaths are reported by the state health department today, along with 652 new positive tests. And if you're back to out of work because of the pandemic, WRTV's Hiring Hoosiers is teaming up with the Indiana Black Expo to help you find your next job. Today we're hosting this virtual Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair. It just got underway and it runs until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Multiple companies are taking part, including FedEx, First Merchants Bank, Indianapolis Airport Authority, Lowe's, and more. For more information, you can go to HiringHoosiers.com. There's more than just the White House at stake this election year. Next, the school district that's faced repeated controversies over the past year and the election that will shape its future. Todd. And Lauren, we're dealing with skies that are partly to mostly sunny right here across central Indiana. Although when you look at the tower camera in Bloomington, it doesn't quite appear that way. And that's once again due to the haze that we have out there from the smoke from the wildfires in uh, western portions of the United States. With that said, it's another mild day and another dry day for us. We'll detail your forecast coming up when the news at noon continues right here on WRTV. Welcome back. So if you're just now joining us, we do have breaking news this midday. Indianapolis public schools have canceled classes for the rest of the day today due to a lingering Internet outage across the school district. IPS first announced a two hour delay this morning because of that Internet outage. Of course, all IPS schools are doing virtual learning entirely right now. However, that outage continues and classes are again canceled for the day.
For more than a year, WRTV has been following controversy with the Northwest Hendrick School Corporation. School leaders there have faced criticism for how they handled sexual misconduct allegations involving a teacher and a student. Well, three candidates are challenging two incumbents for two open school board seats in Northwest Hendricks. The challengers are David Pyatt, Abby Morgan, and Joe Brooks. The incumbents, Jim Dagnastino and Craig Peoples have been criticized for removing public comment from those board meetings and not taking swifter action involving misconduct involving Tri-West employees. All three challengers say they want to make changes and improve transparency and communication between the board and the community. And so WRTV will be talking to all three of those challengers, Abby Morgan, Joe Brooks, and Dave Pyatt, live on the WRTV Facebook page on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Make sure to join us for the School Board Candidate Forum for Northwest Hendricks. Again, it's Wednesday at 5 p.m. on the WRTV Facebook page. The incumbents have not agreed to join us. Dealing with yet another storm next, how the Gulf is dealing with even more flooding and whether or not some of that rain may make its way here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So the Gulf of Mexico is dealing with yet another storm. Tropical Storm Beta is expected to cause flooding in many areas that have already been swamped by other storms this season. ABC's Elwin Lopez is near Houston now with the latest. Overnight, Beta rolled into the Gulf Coast, slamming parts of Texas. In Galveston, rough surf taking out a chunk of this pier. And far inland, the storm hitting south of Houston with more than 12 inches of rain. It's really, really crazy. Swallowing cars, overflowing bayous, standing water cutting off this busy highway. Some drivers stranded, surrounded by floodwaters for hours. Our affiliate KTRK was there as a high water vehicle rescued this man. This water is difficult to get through, several inches, and uh, it's getting higher. It is absolutely getting higher out here. More than 20 people rescued in Houston alone. You're safe, man. I felt like I was going to tip over. I felt like the car was going to tip over. People trudging through chest deep water. This man jumped into his kayak to try to rescue a driver swept off the road. This is dangerous right here. So we got to lift the trucks and stuff. We're going to, I'm going to kayak down and um, put her on the kayak and walk her back in. The storm's sluggish pace still threatening areas for days. We are under a flash flood warning and forecasters warn we could see more bands of rain coming this way. Officials warn for people that have already taken on water into their homes to stay put. In Houston, Elwin Lopez, ABC News. And back here at home, we could use a little bit of rain. So, Todd, are we going to see any of that here in the Hoosier State? Yeah, we really could use that rainfall, Lauren, here across the area as we're running well below normal for uh, this time of year. In fact, Indianapolis and other locations over two inches below normal just for this month. You see that there, Shelbyville being the other, Bloomington 2.09 inches below. And then the numbers aren't as bad in Muncie and Lafayette, but that's because you had rain at the beginning of the year, or the beginning of the month, rather. And we are very, very dry for at least the last two weeks all across central Indiana. In fact, only four hundredths of an inch of rain has fallen at the airport in Indianapolis. So that's basically next to nothing, and we're still on pace for the driest September on a record. Here's a look in Bloomington, and you can see the clouds and some haze out there. And a lot of that haze, as I've been mentioning, is due to the smoke from the wildfires. But look at the grass down there in Bloomington on that field, almost completely brown. 73 in Bloomington right now, as well as Muncie. 68 in Richmond. 71 in Greencastle, as well as Martinsville. A little cooler to the north up there in Peru at 60, uh, 90 degrees, but everybody should climb into the mid to upper 70s here this afternoon with skies that'll be partly to mostly sunny and overall it's still very pleasant. We just don't have that bright blue sky like we had the past couple days across the area and you see a little bit of that cloud cover starting to stream in. I'll expand out for you and there's all that rain that's down to our south from Tropical Storm Beta and some of that rain stretching into Arkansas, but look what happens when it gets into Arkansas. It gets close to that Missouri border and then it basically just falls apart. So we will get no rain from that tropical system, unfortunately, here in central Indiana. We will get the cloud cover, especially as we get into the day tomorrow and Thursday, but nothing in the way of rainfall. Sunset tonight, 741. Skies will be partly cloudy as temperatures fall back down into the 60s. Tomorrow, 
partly to mostly cloudy skies again as those clouds from beta move through 55 in the morning so we start off warmer tomorrow than we have the past couple mornings when we've been in the 30s and 40s across the area and then high temperatures tomorrow will be up in the mid to upper 70s once again we stay in the upper 70s through friday notice the low temperatures there at the bottom of your screen uh, and that white bar and the black numbers uh, those come up as well and then as we work our way into the weekend most of Saturday's dry right now. It does look like a cold front will come through Saturday night into Sunday, and that will be the best chance of rain early Sunday morning that we have in our seven-day planning forecast. And once that front goes through, it does look like, Lauren, much, much cooler air is set to return to central Indiana by the middle of next week. Todd, thank you. Well, they work with kids in vulnerable communities, and now they're getting financial help to expand their work. The group is also planning to use this new funding to bring a service learning program into two Indianapolis schools. Our Megan Sanctorum explains how the program program and the impact of the leaders hopes it has out on their students. It will guide me through school in a good way. This is Nizer Baker. He's a sixth grader here at Kindesi Academy on Keystone and 34th. He's just one of several students applying to be part of a program here with Proact Indy. Challenges that we are trying to solve for schools is that a lot of vulnerable kids that come from vulnerable populations, they they don't have access to programs like this. Darren Slack is the founder of Proact Indy. They just received $25,000 from a nonprofit called the Mind Trust to help address that. You think of the National Honor Societies, the Rotaracts, the Key Clubs, they all target a certain demographic, and it's usually the kids that are already called leaders. Proact doesn't do that. We want the kids that that are in the margins that don't really have anything to, to connect to. Those kids will take part in weekly leadership and social equality workshops. Students will also participate in community service projects and eventually they'll plan their own project to address an issue they feel their community is facing. School leaders say it will help them take what they learn in the classroom and put those skills into action. Yeah, I, I probably use them a lot. How can they leverage that leadership um, to really impact the way poverty uh, faces their community uh, and learn how to um, come up with projects and solutions for some of the issues that they see? The hope is that we want our kids to find themselves and discover who they are as individuals, discover where they see themselves aligning with how they can address um, issues in the community and then find their passions and, and, and then live out their passions through service. Students like Baker say they're already excited to see what change they may be able to create in the community. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. Megan, thank you. So when we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week. We want to introduce you to Roy. We'll show you a little bit more about Roy, how he could be part of your family. Stick around. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back. So it's Tuesday and that means it's time to highlight our pet of the week from Indy Humane. And today we hope you want to take home this guy. This is Roy. Roy is a five year old handsome boy who's been looking for a forever home since May. Indy Humane says that he is a huge love bug. Despite his big size, he does weigh 84 pounds. Roy enjoys exploring on walks and he likes to cuddle up on the couch just as much. His one major requirement is that he goes home without any small cats or dogs. You can take Roy home for an adoption fee of just $87.50. So if you'd like to make an appointment to meet Roy today, just head to IndyHumane.org. He looks pretty cute. And Todd, for anybody trying to get out, maybe go on a walk, walk the dog, take them out to go to the bathroom, pretty much any time today would be a great time. Yep, you are just fine. We have nothing but some hazy sunshine in the forecast here throughout the remainder of the afternoon, Lauren. And temperatures in the upper 70s, partly cloudy. Wednesday, 79 degrees, a little more in the way of cloud cover. Thursday, and there could be a stray shower in southern locations, but that's crossing our fingers. Really don't think it's going to happen. Better storm chances late Saturday into Sunday as a cold front comes through. 81 on Saturday, then much cooler as we start next week. All right, Todd, thank you, and thanks for joining us and making WRTV your choice for news. Have a great day.